हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू माय वीडियो लेक्चर टुडे वी विल डिस्कस एक्सट्रैक्शन एंड प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ एंजाइम्स बिफोर वी स्टार्ट लेट्स सी व्हाट इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन प्रोटीन्स एंड एंजाइम्स सो एंजाइम्स आर मेड फ्रॉम अमाइनो एसिड्स and they are proteins when an enzyme is formed it is made by stringing together between 100 and 1000 amino acids in a very specific chemical reactions an enzyme acts as a very efficient catalyst for a specific chemical reaction and can speed up the reaction tremendously so let's see this in detail basically enzyme technology broadly involves production isolation purification and use of enzymes for the ultimate benefit of human kind in addition recombinant dna technology and protein engineering involved in the production of more efficient and useful enzymes are also a part of enzyme technology the commercial production and use of enzymes is a major part of biotechnology industry the specialties like microbiology chemistry and process engineering besides biochemistry have largely contributed for the growth of enzyme technology let's see steps for extraction and purification of enzymes let's talk about the first step it is called as cell disruption the intracellular enzymes are obtained by disruption of the cells of the microbe this could either achieved by mechanical or non mechanical means the mechanical disruption of cells is carried out by rupturing cell by shear forces and simultaneous decompression through high pressure homogenization chemical thermal or enzymatic lyse are the preferred method for non mechanical disruption the dry, the drying of microorganisms and the preparation of acetone powders are standard procedure in which the structure of the cell wall is altered to permit subsequent extraction of the cell contents let's move on to second step that is separation of solid matter so after cell disruption the next step is separation of extracellular or intracellular enzymes from cells or cellular fragments respectively this operation is rather difficult because of the small size of bacterial cells and the slight difference between the density of the cells and that of the fermentation medium continuous filtration is used in industry large cells example yeast cells can be removed by decantation 
Today, efficient centrifuges have been developed to separate cells and cellular fragments in a continuous process. Residual plant and organ matter can be separated with simpler centrifuges or filters. Besides filtration and centrifugation, extraction and flocculations are also applied. Now let's move on to third step that is concentration. The concentration of enzymes in the processed media is often very low. Hence, the volume of the starting material must be decreased by concentration without inactivating the enzyme. Only mild concentration procedures which do not inactivate enzymes can be employed. These procedures include thermal methods, precipitation and to an increasing extent, membrane filtration. Enzymes are thermolabile, hence heat treatment should be done for a short time. Precipitation of enzymes by salts, for example, ammonium sulfate polymers, example is polyethylene glycol, organic solvent, example is ethanol or acetone, and isoelectric points. In processing enzymes, cross flow filtration is used to harvest cells. Whereas, ultrafiltration is employed for concentrating and desalting. The desalting of enzyme solutions can be carried out conveniently by dye filtration. The small salt molecules are driven through a membrane with the water molecules and perme permeate is continuously replaced by fresh water. Now let's move on to step 4 that is very important purification. Partially purified enzyme preparations is sufficient for many industrial applications. However, for analytical purpose, highly purified enzymes are used. Special procedures employed for enzyme purifications are crystallization, electrophoresis and chromatography. Crystallization and electrophoresis are not relevant for large scale purifications. Chromatography in contrast is of fundamental importance to enzyme purification. Molecules are separated according to their physical properties like their size, shape and charges, hydrophobic interaction etc. or chemical properties like covalent bonding or biological properties. Example is biospecific affinity. Now let's talk about the step 5 that is formulation of the final enzyme product.
Enzymes for industrial use are sold on the basis of overall activity. The proteins are stabilized by increasing the ionic strength of the environment. The commonly used stabilizers are ammonium sulfate and potassium hydrogen phosphate. Specific chemical modifications of amino acid side chains are made to stabilize the enzyme. For example, the derivative of lysine side chains in proteases with and carboxy amino acid anhydrides. Some enzyme preparations are immobilized. Now the final step which is the nature of enzyme products. Commercially available enzymes are produced as enzyme concentrates which result from fermentation and subsequent purification steps. The enzyme concentrate contains the active enzyme and various byproducts from the fermentation process. The composition and amount of byproducts in the enzyme concentrate is extremely variable and depending on the organisms, the media and the conditions applied during fermentation and subsequent downstream processing. Thus, in addition to identification and characterization of the enzyme as the active substance. Parameters applicable for characterization of enzyme concentrate have to be implemented. Additives are added in a subsequent step depending on the particular application and on customer's demands. So, this is all about the extraction and purification of enzyme. In the next part, we will discuss enzyme purification methods in more detail. Thank you.